this one might be a short one today. Okay. Yeah, well, no build today. I'll just write saying what thing I should go, give us a theme. Yeah, um, my theme's Ireland today. Ireland. And um, like yeah, well, old, I'm Irish, so okay. Yeah. And uh, the old kind of um, mythology that come out of Ireland. Yeah, okay. We'll use that. Okay, so I've been reading a little bit about the, the old mythology that has come out of Ireland, and um, they have a place called Tara, which is a hill on Tara. There's a um, an object called the Leofell, which is a, a stone. It's like the Stone of Destiny. So I've, I've written a, a poem called Banis Rigi, which is um, means Feast of the Kings in Irish, I, I, I meant to believe. So this poem is called Banis Rigi. On Tara's crest a king did stand, by God's great will and God's great hand. And Leofell did ring and roar, as Eros right did sing and soar. The winds did whip and the clouds did roll, as Hodler and Bamba did skip and stroll. Their battles fought were battles won, and Eros' pride had worn some. Their peace had come quick, and peace came soon, under cloudless skies with a harvest moon. Yeah, that was good. That was good. So it's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. I've got. I'm reading a little bit about Scotland as well, and um, they have the Stone of Destiny as well. Good day, good day, good day. Sorry, I'm so, late. Uh, and Bill's. Well, we started like, without you, mate. Good on you, but I could always add my cell phone on. Yeah. So please continue. Please continue. Oh, um, I'm listening. No, no, move over. You're not on. You're not on the <laughs> show. Yes. There we go, sit in the little door. Okay, if you want. No, no, you move there, so. Yeah, you never let it lead the way he wants it. Yep. We'll all get in. Oh, good. No worries. Yeah. Good day. Just continue. Okay, I'll just read. Yeah, we'll do it again. Yeah, okay. So, been reading a bit about the old island sort of history and a little bit about Tara, the hill of Tara, where the Irish high kings were crowned. That's what I think. So just reading a little bit about that, I wrote a poem called Banis Rigi. On Tara's crest a king did stand, by God's great will and God's great hand. And Leofell did ring and roar, as Eru's light did sing and soar. And winds did whip and clouds did roll, as Hodler and Bamba did skip and stroll. Their battles fought were battles won, and Eru's pride had borne the sun. Their peace came quick and peace came soon, under cloudless skies, with the harvest moon. Good. Good. And any continuing? I mean, it's got a bit of a saga quality about it, which yeah, means you can go on forever. Yeah, I think I, I could. I need to. I only Several read, verses, bit by bit. Yeah, I've only in read. In that quatrain. Yeah. And then get an adventure going. Yeah. And some sort of event. Yeah. And then just sort of like music. Go and back can, to I, the, can I make it up or do I have to follow Oh, the, make, follow it up, make it up. Make it up. Make it up. Make it modern if you want. Make it. You know, medieval. So can I dip into the history and... Oh, the, just, but you and know, and just, just sort of like telling children's stories or like that in the old days around the fire, just making up as you went along almost. Yeah. But if you can make some sort of saga to yeah. it, uh, which could be a household saga, it could be from a woman's point of view, it could be from yeah. kids' point of view, it could be from a soldier's point of view. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I just keep going in that way because that's a new strain which you're showing and it gets... Mm. It gets you into a more sort of adventurous style. Yeah. I mean, looking at your uh, both of your poetry, which I'm, I'm afraid because I've been hospitalised and both around, I've never done anything. Yeah, but I've no, heard. no, that's fine. Uh, and you're very different, and I have to say so, John. I have to be perfectly frank that you're not the same. <laughs> Neither of you, and uh, you're, uh, but you're both poets, and you have a poetic way of uh, dealing with things. And uh, the differences make uh, a, a good tension or sort of between you. But that's that, that I'll do. I meant to do it today. It's only about half a page, it's in the mind. But um, yeah, but I'll have to uh, I'll have to also declaim any knowledge of the particular lives that I have a review of. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's good. I, I like the way you've got it all together. And it's uh, it's it, it, by next week I should certainly have something. Have something more. So thanks for that. No, I like I like the idea of, of, of something maybe uh, on your own mm -hmm. going into the uh, 
a, a long adventure of some mm. sort, bringing yourself into it, mm. uh, because you can, you can do it. Uh, you don't have to be you know, a medieval love, no, you know what, you just have to be. It might be maybe um, like a, a modern me reflecting on the old law, yeah. L-O-R-E. Yeah, if you want, but, but put yourself in it. Don't be afraid of making yourself uh, an imaginary hero or mm. anti-hero, if you want. So it can be done. Mm. It can be done and, and has been done. So anti-heroes are still good, they're just conflicted. And yeah. Achieving. Well, Byron did it, didn't he? In, um, yeah. His long winded thing, which I can't think of another name of. Uh, oh, it just went on. It's about nine hundred pages. Oh. Worth of but he, he did it. It's a sort of a comic, uh, heroic thing where he looks at himself and he looks at what he does and he looks at life around and in the age in which he lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it wasn't Charlie Harold up to my mind, it wasn't quite so good, but he, he took himself very much himself. And uh, I'll think of it in a minute, but it's, uh, it's, it's very well known. A rather tedious thing, it goes on and on and on and on. But, Tedious it may be, but very um, readable it still mm -hmm. is. So is it, did, what, what was the, that's what I'm not quite confident with, why why would you sort of write a 900 page poem? Well he did, because he's that sort of a person, right. very adventurous you know, around the world, he had loves you know, he had a woman in every court, he had a sort of a yeah. uh, very, very you know, swashbuckling attitude towards everything around him. So, he was a very naughty man. He had, I think, he had uh, some faithful to his wife. I mean, he had all those qualities. But he was a very romantic in the full sense, by mm -hmm. ironic. Um, I think, but I can't think of that. I, I think I think I have read you, the definition. It's a very long, very. There's a what well, used to be a copy in Borders. So I used to go there and read it. Um, you know, every now and then, rather than buy it. Yeah. And um, I was I was quite entranced. He went to places all over the world, had love affairs with every woman he could, he could think of, what he could think of, or probably he, he, he did. Now that's what I call a, a mock epic mm. that uh, people can do in their own way. And he did it, uh, as John does his poetry, without much sort of uh, thinking uh, about whether you are or whether you aren't. You may just put down your making experience and just do it that way. Just so and if Byron had did it that way and got a bestseller or, you know, mm -hmm. But I'd say then both of you could, well, you could go that way, John, and you could still continue getting out the, uh, the differences that you've had in this, in this sort of way. Uh, one you showed me. But John, it sounds as if he's ready now. Yeah, I've, I've just wrote this one. Fighting Irish, leprechauns abound. The Irish fight, they hate English rule. Family from County Limerick, my mother's side. Irish blood, half I am. The Irish keep fighting on. They love that spud, they love that song. Irish myth keeps coming, keeps going, coming along. I love it, man. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I found uh, the, the spud, like, uh, I was going for a run, run one day and. Uh, I was eating up into the sticks up into the hills and I was kind of hungry and I found this potato <laughs> and I thought about the Irish. You know, and I, I actually, was it a good potato or bad potato? Uh, it was a little green one but I ate probably uh, about a quarter of it. And, uh, Didn't get sick of it? No, no, but uh, no, you think of the famine. The uh, famine indeed, yeah, yeah this, is, this is true. But I think John's is a celebration of the Irish. Mm -hmm. In a way, you're, you're celebrating... Um, my Sunday. mother, because my mum's Irish, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. and Still she, alive. Her, yeah, her family, they're from County Limerick. Oh, very good. Yeah. 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 And um, when my parents went over to England a couple of months back, they actually went over and stayed in County Limerick for a day. We know just oh, a bit of family connection. <laughs> cool. Well, a lot of people do, and that's what Ireland depends on now. Tourist, Tourist family trade, yeah. just sort of come in and out. And did she like it? Yeah, yeah. You didn't go over with him? No, no. You didn't want to go over with him? I don't have that sweet sort of money. <laughs> I'll so get there one day. So you can sing your way over there. No wonder. I'll call you the Ned Kelly, the 21st century Ned Kelly. 
you know, you give yourself a persona, yeah. you know, if you take the joy with you as a sort of a protective yeah. bodyguard. You just scare them off. <laughs> no, it's a great place to go to, I mean, I think if you've got an adventurous... Uh, if you've got any Irish connection, I think it's a place to go. My brother went over there. Uh, I haven't been traveling through the hospital system at the moment. Oh, I've got, um, how do they call this thing? Uh, it's not cancer, or it's mild mm, I don't know what they stones? Yeah, gold stones. Oh, right. And uh, I didn't want to have a operation. Dogs didn't. The opinion was about the liberation of the ocean, so I left. After a day and a half there, I decided I'd take a little, at least a day's leave and perhaps go back next week to a better hospital like John James, where you pay for it and all sorts of people who serve But going through it was a, was a bit of a gain, a bit of a shame, but I didn't write about that. But I didn't. I wrote about a um, different thing which it connected with my ailment, such as it is. And the first one's called feverish, and the second one is called next day feeling better. There we go. I've written today about the hospital. Right from experience. But the, the, the rest is sort of sort out. So first of all, a feverish poem. To wander with a fever on a sunny day won't please the doctor much, but keeps the blues away. Cerulean is how I feel in the sky. A higher kind of blue, sky piloting with avians of varied shade and hue. Serene with head now lighter from less strength and food. Will it heal? God only knows. Does enhance my mood. That's how. That's six. Where, where does the um, where does the word cerulean come from? Is that I think it's Latin. I think it means the the yeah. dome of the sky. I believe. It's a wonderful word. Yeah. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah, I picked it up. There's no harm in using the English language while it's there. <laughs> but a lot of things. Anyway, that's the the fever one. Next day, feeling better. Children squeal and gamble as street fun fairs in sway. Balloons and shining faces. Blue round heads small. I don't know what that girl's saying. It's the kids. Blue round. Oh, that's the balloons. Blue round heads small. So that's the little balloons. The kiddies. My grin sets off a baby. Babies bounce on Dad's strong arm. Dad grows surprised at who had worked the charm. Might glows and babies descent to the ground, to a ground and crawl. Must get down to that for adventure. And Dad was past perplexed. Because I'm I've set the bag off on me. He'll work it out. Now it's time for me away. I work my magic. I can get away. Get out. Get the hell out of it before I get into trouble. The father might think so. I think of me provoking the kid like that. But there you are. Next day, feeling better. Yeah, that's good. I like the um, shining faces. Blue round head small. Mm, blue round is meant to be balloon. That's not altogether clear. And the head small is. Mm. It's good. Uh, they're bouncing around, having a good time. And uh, I was just entering into the spirit of it. But uh, we've, we're, we're all keeping writing poetry, which is good. We want to. And uh, John, how do you find the uh, sort of business of doing it? Do you wait until the last minute, or do you write your stuff when, before you come here? Well, it just depends. Go busy on So the present one, was that done? Um, I just wrote it just then. It's just uh, out of the top of the head. Well, last day for the, because the thing is, my mind's about Irish, about Ireland, so. Yeah. Yep, but <laughs> what, 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 what made you, you uh, write it to any particular thing? 
Um, well, he said this was about Ireland and... Oh, so you just followed that. Yeah, then I just thought, well, yeah. my mum's Irish, so i just... So you've got an Irish connection, so we've all got an Irish connection. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got an Irish connection. Yeah, right? most people in Australia. In Australia, yeah. mate. They did well on the rugby, too. Did they? Yeah, oh, they did Australia, yeah. Did they? Yeah, good. 15 or 16 to 6 of them. Oh, I'm sorry they didn't pay that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're a bonny lot. They keep fighting. They're nearly broke, but they're still fighting, which is a good, good way to be. Mm -hmm. But um, I can see you getting into a saga eventually. With yeah. the poem you've written. Oh. Just in little bits. Yeah. Not all at once. You don't have to write it once and once and once. Just as you wish. Probably one idea I had was um, for, the, for my favourite poem that I wrote was like the journey poem. I did want to divide it to three parts, but I think what I'll do with that is um, do the same thing. Maybe sort of consider like an overview of what I want. You know, the kind of mm. me or, or the character to achieve, and then kind of divide it up and maybe have a, a low point and a high point and somewhere in between. I think that's great. But the little I've read about the, the law, the ancient law, is that that poem came out of that. And I'm quite happy with, with extracting the poetic mm, from mm. there. Out of that. Yeah, yeah I've just occurred to me what, John, uh, what uh, Byron's poem is called, Don Juan. Um, right. Don Juan. Uh, it came out, oh, right about 18, I think, in full form. The last ten years, it was like Whitbury, just sort of writing things down. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was mock heroic in the sense that he made fun of people who went to Turkey and met the uh, uh, caliphs and lived in a harem. I wonder what I did. He, he could, of course, be mm -hmm. He had to be you know, keeper of the harem, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It was very sexually active, uh, very, very. No nonsense sort of this, and they like John. He did what he saw in front of him, he enjoyed it, and he made no bones about it. He was very uh, left in his politics, didn't like the conservatism, and after Waterloo, uh, he did, uh, and knocks the, the heads off every politician you can think of. Right. It, it's fun, it's fun to read. It, it's, it's a little bit I mean, it's, it's in uh, rhyming, it's, it's sort of um, uh, couplets. couplets, yeah, right, couplets. and with a little variation, but it's not, it's not meant to be uh, an intellectual exercise, mm -hmm. it's, it's very much his, his, his fucking times, or his persona. So it's a little slightly satirical kind of oh, yes. Um, yes. view of, of yeah, yeah. So it doesn't. Yeah, it's yeah. healthy but vigorous, and, but, but quite a healthy sort of... Uh, healthy. Yeah, look, I, I think he was... He was writing it as he went, mm. as he was travelling. He wrote this, this stuff and um, got it all together. Gave it to Murray's, the publisher, not what the hell it was, and they finally got it into some sort of a order. And uh, he died, I think he died in Greece, didn't he? he was killed in Greece during the war, wasn't he? Mm. Into Greek independence with other people. Mm. But you don't have to be like Byron mm. to, to write that sort of thing. You mm. can, in fact, do it whatever it is the way you want, maybe a personal. Uh, way as one has it, but but heroic. Well, you're not. You're proud of what you're doing. You're not. You don't sort of try and uh, say, "Oh, I'm only a mere kangaroo poet. You can't take me for it." Oh, you could if you want, but I don't think that's the way to go. I think if you're reasonably confident, and I think in most of the poems I write, I'm reasonably confident. I'm, con I'm con reasonably confident. You know? And I, I certainly don't go into the mock or anything like that. Yeah, one, once or twice, I don't know much. It's more sort of uh, as what it hits me. And, uh, and, and what Byron did, and I think this is so important to know, what we've been doing in these sessions is not get too, not get too highbrow, not write about things that people yeah. watching might find not only boring, uh, but sleep inducing. They're not. Uh, and ma many uh, people, I won't mention names, there's nobody I know that can fit in this category, but people whose poetry I've read seems to be in a higher plane. Uh, some of the feminist poets are very intelligent, extraordinarily intelligent, but difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, one idea I had was like a kind of playful adults, maybe epic, where um, you know I, I could kind of stroll across the land just as a kind of you know mm. liberal, a, a li sort of figurative giant, and just meet mm. um, maybe um, personalities or, or, or sort of entities from past law, you know, mm. whether it be sure, um, you know, to just yeah, from great different idea. kind of cultures. Great and, idea. I sort of lost a bit of it. What is it? The, the first Australian ode, because nobody's really a big, big one. The nearest is such as life, Furphy's uh, novel, right. which which sort of skirts the whole of the Western District of uh, New South Wales, Western District, the Riverina, and other areas, and his his travels back there in the eighteen nineties, well, and that's that's a good. There's one vision I have of um, you know like two adults. Girl and boy, a woman and a man, hand in hand, sort of strolling across, and they're, they're figure of the literal giants, you know, they're 50 feet tall, but just kind of surveying the um, dilemmas and the loves and the hopes of, of the people, mm. you know, and, and just kind of looking and, and caring. And, mm. But I don't know, just. Um, I think that's wonderful. I think if you can get into, as you can, I've seen you with the people's minds and with Steve, the old grey-haired fellow the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got an empathy with people. Did you hear about Steve? What happened? Oh, he died, didn't he? Yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, he died. He, I can tell he was in a bad way. Right. Yeah. He's the bloke of help. Yeah, well, he died last week. Mm. Do you know his funeral? I just got told just right. before and I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they called an ambulance. Yeah. They did. We were there when, when the ambulance was called, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I thought it was a different Steve. No. Yeah. I used to know him. He, he, he was he led a very interesting life. His last phase was very talky. I can't be just talking, talking, talking. His, Before that, he went through a very silent time where you'd say hello, Steve. Mm -hmm. Before that, he had all sorts of ideas. I mean, there's three love apes in one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yes, I remember Steve. Steve very well. And uh, I've actually got footage that I filmed a few years back at um, Monica of him playing a good keyboard on his basket. In Monica. He busked. He, he used to busk. He, he may have. He came along to a couple of our poetry sessions. Yeah. When Michael was there, and uh, uh, he he said a little bit, but not much. To pity that wasn't uh, done. But he, yes, he, I do remember him very well, very well. You know, yeah. he did a very. I've episode. got footage of him somewhere. Oh, good. Yeah, well, okay, because he wanted to be a poet, wanted to join us. Yeah. He joined us, and then he didn't really feel it was a human at all. But he went off. Yeah. I just have to assess the connection from my phone to my laptop so I can get it off the table. I think if you could, that would be nice. We could both, we could all share it, I dare say. No, you, you were very kind to him when he called for an ambulance. Yeah, he's always been pretty kind to me. Very gentle sort of person. Yeah. And, uh, uh, he must have been pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. So he must have had a heart attack. Yeah. Because you never know when people did. That's what I thought I had last time. Mm -hmm. It's completely different. Um, and, uh, it's not much but uh, with Steve, it certainly was. And, uh, God love him. I hope his, um, his spirit is wandering around. Because he was very talkative. He'd stop and talk and say hello. Yeah. And very, his last. Uh, Part of his life was before he lived in Queensland. He had it really up in Queensland. He used to go up there, yeah. see the location, and come back. Then he went back just recently as well. Mm, mm. Didn't, oh, I don't think he liked it much. And I think he was a bit lonely. I mean, he said, I don't think he's lonely. He talked away and he did want to communicate. Yeah. Yes, I thought it was the thing Stephen was and an older bloke with a bald head, white head. And that's the Stephen the Longish. That's the long one. Yeah, and the, the very clear voice. And I can hear him. 
I've listened to it very much, so I won't say it. It, uh, it looked as if it was genuine. John, the bloke in charge, you know, mm -hmm. helped you. And the did, an ambulance did come, I think, eventually. Yeah, the ambulance did. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Chris was on the phone. And uh, poor old Chris had a coughing fit in my left. <laughs> We're all getting sick, all this yeah. shit fish week must have, yeah. uh, might have had an effect on this. Anyway, it's a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so. Life's full of them. Well, there's enough people conspiring for us to have conspiracy theories. So, enough evidence of it happening. But the. Uh, it's very, very odd. Anyway, look, the book that you're both planning to do, what's the um, deadline for it? Uh, um, you've got it pretty well. Before Christmas, like, I think. Really. Yeah. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I'm starting slowly getting enough material for. Um, I was thinking about one day in the next 12 months or so. Yeah, I, another one. Well, yeah, because I looked at the Jindera Press after looking at your books for mm. Mm. And um, uh, uh, Tim McCann from Two Dollar Books told me that you can, there's a program whereby you, you pay, but they publish and sort of mm. put it all together in a package. And mm. That kind of thing. Yes, sir. Who does Jindera? Yeah, that's what Tim said, yeah. Uh, I didn't really get that. He could be right. Um, so, what did he say they do? Uh, they, apparently, they help you put together a package, and you know your, your work is published, but you pay for it. Ah, oh, that's fair enough. Yes, yes, they did. Whether they do now after Stephen's illness, I think is not it? But it's certainly oh. they can certainly be uh, approached on that one. Right. I think it's very. Uh, he's got a partner now, very active little woman, uh, who uh, probably helps her. her uh, him rather quite a lot, so they may be back into it. But I think when he got sick, it's very labour intensive. But you charge for the time spent and all that. Yeah, Tim is partly right, but whether Stephen does it now or not, right. I don't know. But it's worth investigating. So, would you typically, you know, put something together and submit it to a publisher? Yes. And, and if, oh. that, if, if it was good yes. enough, if they would publish it with the expectation that they could make a profit? Is that kind of how it works, or is they based on the No, no, they're not working on the profit thing. They charge you to get the thing out. It's almost like self-publishing. Oh, good. But they charge, charge you less than they do. Right. It's all the same. Self-promotion, self-publishers. Right. Okay. Yes. So I think Jim Dara would be like that. Yeah, or at least try for this. Well, I'm not proof. What does Jim Dara mean? A shaft of shining light. Oh, brilliant. I've got a few. So it's called untitled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. I, 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 I wasn't sure because I could have named them. No, no, you weren't sure. But I, untitled is quite a. I, I quite like it because it's, it leaves a lot open to. Well, I think that's what John's book is talking about. At times, it's an opportunity to go for a lot of things you're talking about. And you don't want to be complicit on the wrong time. No, I, I, don't, I don't want to put it in its box. No. Yeah. So that's okay, just keep it there. It's different, certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would it's, it, it's a good mm -hmm. sign up, but what, uh, and that gives me an idea of putting the previous down. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no don't title them, John. Don't do them. Well, just leave them. Leave them. No, okay. leave them. Okay. Leave the fucking as they, as they don't. I mean, that's how you work, anyway. Um, you, you do it as you do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. No agonising. Yeah. Yeah. No agonising. Yeah. Just, just let yeah. them be, and uh, you know, I, I like, uh, I like David. I like Titan. It's called the cool. Carnival of Light. Carnival of Light. Okay. Of Light. Of Light. Yeah. Okay. Just make a difference there. See, that's that that photo. Yeah. It's got oh, the light yeah. in it. Is that the photo you're going to put in? Yeah. In the, in the book? Yeah. Oh, just, just sort of write something to that effect. Yeah. That would help give me an idea of what it was going to look like. Mm. What's the photo of? Shame. Shame. Yeah. 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 
ายใจเอ๊ะถ้าเกิดเป็นแบบใจก็ไม่ต้องเอาภาพไม่เป็นปัญหาไม่เป็นปัญหาไม่ใช่ไหมใช่ไหมเ
to me, you know, the, yeah. I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't YouTube, but, uh, but uh, never mind, it was good, it was apparently quite a few people. Humphrey was there. Where was he there? At Smith's or Andrew, oh. on Thursday last night. Ah, oh, I wish I'd known. I wouldn't be. Oh, I didn't mention, but I just assumed you were. So it was um, <laughs> Monica and Beyond? Uh, Canberra. Canberra and Beyond. Beyond. Yeah, it's, the, it's not, in my view, as good a book as the first one, which has a certain bounce to it. Yeah. This one's a little more serious, a little more sort of uh, a little less shiny, shall we say, shining lights are there, but they is it, um, you know, I, I've kind of been thinking about the idea of putting together a book and it, there's a bit of a, you know, a dilemma, I, I guess, like, is, is all your very best favourite poetry in your first book and is every s subsequent attempt to publish, do you think, sort of, you know, trying to catch the same light, you know, <laughs> poetry is a difficult thing to... Oh, look, yeah, yeah, it does it attempt to catch the light. I suppose you always try and do that, but you don't. Because you're a Bluetooth on your phone? Um, no, I don't think so. Sorry. You don't, you don't capture the You can't. As it was in the first book. I think the first book was the first book. Second one can never quite do it. You can make attempts to, attempts to do it, but every time you write, it's a bit like that. The one I'm writing at the moment, I'm good morale in the hospitals to try and get a bit of light. Mm -hmm. Is it, do you think, it's one of the things that I'm curious about, but, um, you know, it is kind of your source of inspiration, your muse, you know, your mm. poetry, is it mm. something that is kind of eternal that you can channel, you know, constantly, or does it sort of evaporate and diminish over time? Oh, it's never done that, no. Not since I started writing poetry, seriously. This is, this is the interesting thing. But the muse has always, I guess, been there. Mm. And occasionally, over the past 20 or 30 years, I've written poems. Um, but much more laboured and long descriptive than any of since the first volume came out. But no, I've never never had the sense that the muse has, uh, <laughs> has visited me and I've ignored the muse. Well, now the muse descends when I've got the time to do it. I've got plenty of time now. So a lot of older people I think are, uh, for, for, and, and each muse is different. Mm -hmm. I mean mine is just a totally uh, adventurous one. It's a political one. Right. It's also a you know, social. I'm very fond of children. Kids. I like children. I like son. There's kind of, you know, like with a perspective unjaded from the perspective of children out of the world. It's quite something that the children find better. I do. I do. It's something that's early. It's now and again hard. and he reflects back. And he has the ability to bring that out. And I put him on the shelf. Some of them do nice and do that. Well, you see. Yeah, it's a very gentle Very, as you see, descriptive. He writes poems about As a big But uh, he, he hardly has that. Not many people have. Then, then there are people like Parson Barn and John Maybe later. Uh, early to late. He seemed to live in the night. Sort of regional poems. Yeah. Of uh, life in parts of it. Well, uh, Hardy was regional, not Wessex. Uh, that part of the West Coast. And, uh, but he was also very successful and very disappointed, not novelist, because people thought his books were irreligious. And, uh, um, uh, what was the, what's the other word? Uh, indecent, you know, because they were treated with sexual matters that the Victorians would like. But uh, he wrote, he wrote in, a, in an enormously uh, influential way, and he's still read today, and he's still on the curriculum of Australian schools. Yeah. And that says a lot for him. To Kenzie and Poldy, but, uh, but his poetry is very, very interesting and very. 
not very self-revealing, but that doesn't matter. He, he gets the essence of what he says. And he's gentle, gentle. He's not a, he's not a block bomber by any means. He, he tries to get it down as he's being. This is the thing. We all, I think, as writers, or in any way, we're artists, mm-hmm. if we're public servants, God help us, do it as we want to do it. Yeah. Each of us has a soul, each of us has a, has a way of doing things. I think. It's your own personal truth that you're trying to express. I think so. I think so. Yeah, right. and, and you don't do it for fame, you don't do it so that mm. people can see the big lights mm. and stuff. You do it because uh, you like doing it, mm. one. And two, you feel that you are teaching yourself as you're going mm. through, because you're not, you're not aware of a lot of things. Like when you're a bit older, it's hardy, but hardy lived till he was, I think he's almost 90 when he died. And he kept writing right right to the end. And if you can do that, you, you yeah, yeah, you yeah. So I think these little groups of three of us gathered together are very worthwhile. Definitely. Um, whether people out there can come and join us is up to them. Mm-hmm. Here at the uh, Church at 11 o'clock, isn't it? Must be late but mm-hmm. today. 11 o'clock every uh, Wednesday a.m. John and Bill and David show. And no charge. <laughs> And you can get a cup of coffee at the United Church before you come in. It's the United Church. They do a great job. Cool. Um, so what's next week? Next week, I thought I'm either write about Scotland or um, I, I'm pretty keen on doing some work card. I'm not really okay. about, about Peter. Um, Peter. Sorry. Stephen, that's a good idea. I, I, I've, yeah. had a few, I've had a lot of conversations with him. Oh, so good. Very kind. That'd be lovely. Yeah. If you could just give him a tribute. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And so read it uh, into the YouTube. That's one way of getting into the, the, uh, getting into the world. Yeah. And uh, that'd, be, that'd be beautiful if you do that. Yeah, definitely. I don't know anyone. <laughs> no. It won't turn off, do you know? No. It's not that. I forgot to, I plugged it all in, but then forgot to turn it on. Oh, well, no. <laughs> do it all next week. Oh, no, no, it's happened. It's just saying that it's, the battery's just about to start. It's uh, it say you've recorded it? Oh, it's still recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's what I thought you were saying. Not that it matters, because there's always plenty more of these to come. Yeah, yeah, still recording. It's like the church services, they'll never end here, will they? Ever and ever, I mean. Yeah. Okay. Good on you, fellas. Well, that was good. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, John. Thank you, John, indeed. Yeah. We'll see all good. Yeah, we'll see you next week, John. We'll all yeah. be here and uh, keep up.